This is TG with Tech Made Easy. Welcome to my channel. My channel is all about making things affordable, practical, and easy. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at Cos OS and how to combine drives for to, into one drive on Cos OS. I didn't even know this function existed, but I've been, I bet I've been playing around with or using. I haven't deployed it yet. Looking at Cos OS, I looked at it about a year ago. Then I decided to look at it again. I didn't realize that there was a way to take multiple hard drives and combine them into one pool. Now, was it RAID? Let's check that out and see how it works and how to set it up. Now, I will say this much with COS OS. When I first looked at it, I noticed there was two, two major weaknesses, and that is making a RAID array with COS OS. It's not built into the system. The other one is how to set up a Samba Share user with a username and password right now, and for home, for you just to set up a share that doesn't require a password may not be that big a deal, but it, it would be nice for them to have a way to set up a Samba user without going to the terminal. But today, we're going to look at how, they, how they're addressing combining hard drives together into one pool. Now, you can use Zuma OS. Zuma OS, basically the same makers of Cos OS, so the interface is the same, works the same, and it does give you, but it's an operating, it's a true operating system where it's installing Debian and the OS, where Cos OS works off of any a Debian desktop Linux or Ubuntu server or Debian server. And I like the fact that I can choose whatever I want to install it on and not just be restricted to the Debian OS that they're using. But at any rate, there's multiple reasons why I'd rather use Cos OS than the Zima OS. And be sure to subscribe because the next video I'm going to make is how to create a RAID 5 in Casa OS and have all your data saved to the RAID 5. But let's take a look at how they're doing this pool and is it RAID, is it not RAID, how it's working, the pros and cons. Let's get started. All right, here we are. I've got Casa opened up on my web browser. Now, I'm also running Casa on my Linux Mint desktop. And yes, you can install Casa on any Linux Debian desktop. Um, I do that because I'm actually experimenting with Casa OS and it kind of helps me uh, to have it on the desktop instead of running it in Ubuntu server or Debian server. Um, just, there's just some other things uh, that I that's easy for me to, to work around the desktop and not just in the Casa GUI. Um, when I deploy this, then I I may or may not keep it on desktop. It doesn't really, and to, to me, it doesn't really matter if I have it installed on a, on, a, on a Linux desktop or if I'm using Debian or Ubuntu server to do it. Okay, one thing that I want to mention here, um, I mentioned in the, in the intro, uh, but I wasn't clear on that. So Zima OS, um, is, is made by COS OS, but it, when you install it, it installs Debian and installs CASA. They call it Zemo OS. And in Zemo OS, they actually you can create RAID 5 with that, which is nice. I don't remember if it has a functionality for Samba or you just create a generic Samba share that everybody accesses. But at least in that one, and maybe they might go that way with, with COS OS, I, I don't know. But let's take a look at how you do multiple drives in CASA right now. But at any rate, because I was doing this, I was messing around, I was copying files back and forth, and I was testing out the performances. Um, I actually wasn't testing out some performances, I just wanted to see some things copying stuff back and forward. But I was using the desktop to do that. I wasn't using CASA OS to do that. Now let me explain how CASA OS um, is structured if you're not familiar with it. Uh, for, so we are gonna go ahead and add five drives to this, but before I do that, I'm all about performance. So when I find something quirky or performance-wise it's either good or bad, um, uh, I like to show that. Um, and it's not a deal breaker with COS OS, I just found it interesting. So uh, so before we get into the adding more drives to this, let me just go in really quick. One thing I want to show you here is storage, obviously, is where all the files where it's cost, it, the storage is not the operating system. Storage is only a directory where CASA keeps all of their data, where they keep their Docker information and any files that you save 
go into storage. And you're going to notice here that it shows my storage at 1.79 because of the rest of that is for the operating system. Okay, so let's go into files for a minute. Now, app data is where all of the Docker information is saved, which is great because it's easy to back up. The Docker information is there. And then, of course, these other folders are for your personal data downloads, you know, pictures, media, uh, for your videos, so on and so forth. So now what I want to do here, though, is, is what I want to show is, and Duplicity, I was testing that out. It's a beta. It doesn't work yet. So let's go ahead, and what I want to do next is I want to copy a file, but I don't want to do it through uh, Costa's GUI. Normally, this is how you do that. You'd upload to copy a file because it doesn't show you the performance, how fast something is copying. Now, just so you know, my server is running off of a, a SSD, so I only get 500 megabytes performance. Um, and then my drives that are adding are going to be all SSDs um, for this. But what I discovered is, let me let me open up these two folders for a minute here. So I have, so in COS OS right now, um, this is my desktop. Again, it's just an SSD. My server, this is my, this is folders on my server. My server is 10 gigabits. Let's copy this over. And so the performance, it's going to copy it as fast as my desktop will handle it. And you're going to see here that it's copying at a little over 500 megabytes. It's actually, it, it'll slow down. It's anyway, it copies a, a little over 500 megabytes. But now what we're going to do is in, in this, this data folder is where this storage is. So these are all those folders that we were just looking at through the file browser on on COS OS. So I'm just going to copy a file into the media folder. So what you're going to show here, and I don't know why this is like this, uh, and uh, one thing I don't think you want to do is I don't think you want to delete their default folders, but one thing you're going to notice is that here is instead of five, instead of um, over 500 megabytes copying, it's 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 almost 200 100 megabytes slower copying to the CASA OS data folders. And I've tested this and tested this, and that's just the way it is. I don't know why they do that. Those are the, your interest in performance, and maybe that doesn't matter to you because maybe you're not even using CASA OS for data. Maybe you're accessing your data from somewhere else. But I just thought that was interesting, something that I found out. So, um, uh, but it did affect, and one thing it would do, I would do is I would subscribe because my next video is how do you create a RAID 5 and have that RAID 5 server available to COS OS through the files folder here. Um, so that video is coming up, but it did cause some issues with me when I did it. Um, and I'll explain those issues in that, um, in that video. Um, but once I resolve those issues, it works great. So now let's show you how to add drives to COS. And what it's going to do, it's going to add drives to storage here, not to the operating system, just the storage. And it's going to add it to the data directory right here that we're looking at. Okay. So you go in here, you go into the setting that's on your storage widget. You say create storage. Now I've got five hard drives in here. Most of them are four terabyte. There's one, one two terabyte. And this is the advantage of CASA. It doesn't matter the drive size that you're adding. Uh, so, so you just, and unfortunately you can only select one at a time and, and then it goes ahead and adds that. So I'm going to just add all these to my data storage. Once it's added, it won't show up here anymore. So I can just keep on saying create. Now, one thing is, is that it, the, the, the disks need to be formatted. If you know a disk is a format, you can say format and create, and it'll format the disk and 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 create and put it into the storage. So let's go ahead and hit that one. And now what we're going to do, and you'll notice here that drives are never what they say they are. They're, it's not true four terabytes. So when you when we look over here, okay. So after combining all those disks. Um, <clears throat> So we had four four terabytes, and we had a two terabyte, and then we had some disk space 
um, on the drive that has the operating system on it. It gives us a total of 18 terabytes at this point. And again, all of that is located in this section right here. Now, one thing I wish that Cost OS would do is I wish it would tell you when, when you're in the file manager how much how much how much drive space you have here, how much is free, and how much is used. It'd be really nice if they'd do that. Once you do that, then you go into here and you say merge storages. Now I'm not 100 percent sure why you have to do this. because um, it says that if you have any data on those drives, it could be wiped out. Because this for this this does not create a RAID. So what this is doing, this is a function of the operating system. It's called Merge FS. It's a program that you can add to the operating system that allows you to merge a drive to another drive or to a folder. And I and so and I think it even allows you to add a folder data to another folder. But the way COS is doing it is it's adding all these drives to the data folder that we just saw. And then it and and then over here where this says Casa, this is my drive that Casa OS is residing on. Um, so now when we go here, we've got all this storage space. Now let me explain the advantages and disadvantages of this over something like a RAID 5, a RAID 6, or a mirror. Okay, right now this does not have parity. And before I, I talk about the pros and cons, this is one of their official blog websites that says that this was coming. And here it is right here. Merger FS. I think I said merge FS. It's merger FS. Um, but it doesn't create parity. Um, now you can create parity with another program called Snap Raid. Um, and maybe they'll add Snap Raid to this in the future. I don't know. Um, but with Snap Raid, then you can add a drive for parity. Now, what does that sound like? If you're not familiar with the server world, um, there's what they call Unraid. Unraid works just like this, but it, but it has a drive for parity or two drives for parity, depending on how many drives you're adding to the system. So the advantage of this is, is that um, it doesn't matter what size of drives you add. Now, what happens if a drive goes bad? All right, so the problem is you don't know where the data is being stored on doing something like this. And what it does is it fills up a drive, then it moves on to the next drive and puts the data on there. And I'm not sure how it does that if it just, if, if it just looks at this drive's getting full, now I'm gonna use this drive. And it keeps track of which drive the data is on um, to get to that, that data. Um, now, when you create a RAID array, you get some, you usually get some performance out of that, um, especially if you're striping, but RAID 5, you sh technically you should get a little bit of performance out of that. RAID 6, you get performance out of it, um, but you also get parity. So in RAID 5, you can have a drive go down and you, and you got four drives that have all your data on it. And then you replace that drive and you rebuild the RAID array. So with RAID, but if the RAID array fails while it's building, you've lost all your data. That's why you need backups. With this, the way they're doing this system here, with Merger FS, if you have a drive that goes down, only the data on the drive is bad. But not all the data is bad on that drive. Because when you have a drive that goes bad, you can still get the data off of that drive. It might be only affecting so many files. So you might be able to recover 90% of the files off of that drive that's bad. So, so that's, again, pros and cons to everything. I like this idea because people that are looking for a simple server solution, having something like this, I think Casa OS is much easier to use than Unraid. Um, now you have to learn something a little about, about Dockers, but you also have to learn that about Unraid. So I think this is a great direction they're going in, but they just need to uh, implement that, maybe that snap raid to give you a little bit of parity. Um, I think that would make most people feel more comfortable um, doing something like this. I know this makes me a little nervous and be sure to subscribe and like because I'm going to show you how to create a raid five or a raid six, depending on what you want to do, but how you create a real raid, um, a raid uh, ZFS, Z1, Z2, Amir, and, and have it available 
in your files for Casa OS to save all your data to. Um, it works really slick, and it's just it it, it works under uh, I did it under media, so everything under media is being stored to your RAID array. I find it very interesting concept, and I like where it's going. It would just be nice if they eventually make it so that there is parity. Now, I will say this much about this again. Performance-wise, if you're using hard drives, the performance isn't, it's gonna be up to one hard drive, just like a normal hard drive. But if you don't need that performance, and that, that's why a lot of people use Unraid, is Unraid, it's the same thing. Um, you don't get immediate performance from your drives with Unraid. That's why with Unraid, you can put in an SSD or an NVMe for copying files over and copies of that and then dumps it on to the hard drives for, for performance. Now, the way I've set this up, mine are all SSDs, so I don't have to really worry about that performance. Um, but at any rate, I hope that wasn't too confusing for you. Um, I think this is the right direction. I would, I really like Casa OS. Out of all the interfaces that I've seen, I like this one the best. I hope they can keep on going forward and making this better and better. The other thing that they're lacking, like I said at the beginning of this, is creating Samba shares that are username and password protected. Anyway, this is TG with Tech Made Easy. Have a great day. Thanks. Now that was easy peasy.